We talk about outliers before. An outlier is a number that is way off. Right? If we start looking at the incomes of everybody here, or let's just say we bring the incomes of, of, of the parents, right? People we live with. We bring the incomes and then we compare. There will be a variance, right? There will be there will be a difference between them. However, I mentioned now let's bring in an athlete, a professional athlete. Let's say Messi. How much money does Messi make compared to to our the adults in our school? Now, Messi's an outlier, right? He's he's numbered does not really represent the other numbers. The other numbers might be different, but they're not too far off from each other. Now, uh, an athlete, their their income is a number that is way, way off, right? That's what we call an outlier. We're going to start using standard deviation. So I'm going to give you guys mean standard deviation, and I'm going to say the outlier using standard deviation is a point whose residual is more than three the standard deviations from the mean. Okay, so more than three standard deviations from the mean. So you might be like, okay, what does this mean, Mr. Leon? So let's take a look. For examples, the first two examples, the sample data set has a mean of six, so very important, has a mean of six and the standard deviation of 13. Determine whether each of the following sample measurements are outliers. Okay, so what does this mean? Now, the mean is six. So the smallest number that I'm going to accept. So let me write the smallest number. It is going to be the mean, which in this case is six, minus the standard deviation times three. So six minus 13 times three. I remember I have to multiply before I subtract. So don't forget that I have to go six minus 39. The smallest number is gonna be negative 33. That's the smallest, and it's fine to be a negative, it's fine. The smallest number that I'm gonna accept is a negative 33. Now the biggest. Gonna be the mean, which is six, plus standard deviation times three. Now here, six plus 39, because I had to multiply first, six plus 39 is 45. So the biggest number that I'm going to accept is 45. The smallest number is going to be negative 33. The biggest number is 45. And obviously everything in between. Now that, that's what we call the numbers that are pretty close to each other. Anything smaller than negative 33, anything bigger than 45 is what we call an outlier. So now here for my first example, is 85 an outlier? Yes, because I said the biggest I was going to accept is 45. 85 is bigger than 45. So I'm going to say, yes, 85 is an outlier. Now, how about 24? My example would be, I have the same mean. I have the same standard deviation. 24 is in between negative 33 and 45. Because remember, I said the smallest number I'm going to accept is negative 33. The biggest number I'm going to accept is 45 and then everything in between. So 24 is a number that I will accept. So the question here is determine if this is an outlier. No. No, this is not an outlier. It's a number that I will accept. In this case, any number between negative 33 and 45, I will accept. Anything else, I do not. And how did I find out? I went the mean plus or minus, depending if I was finding the smallest or the biggest. So I'm gonna say the, uh, the formula that I did was the mean plus or minus, again, depending on what I was finding, standard deviation, I'm gonna use parentheses, standard deviation times three. Because I said, an outlier using standard deviation is a point whose residual is more than three standard deviations from the mean. So you're more than three standard deviations from the mean. 
That's why I multiply by three. Okay, so you guys will practice some numbers there, some examples. I'll give you the mean, I'll give you the standard deviation, and I'm asking, is this an outlier, yes or no? But then, then we're also gonna be working with the interquartile range, which we're, we're gonna abbreviate as IQR. Now, the interquartile range is basically from the from our numbers, from the data that we have, is the measure of variation that gives the range of the middle 50% of the data. Okay, so the 50% of the data. So what I what I mean with this is imagine I have some numbers. I have a list of numbers. And I find the, the smallest. And I find the largest. And then I find the, the number right in between, which we usually say median, right? And then in between the smallest and the median, I find the part, the half of that. And in between the median and the largest, I find the part of that. Now, one thing I want us to notice, I broke this into four sections. So we're gonna call those quarters because I broke it into four sections. And this is quarter zero, the beginning, this is quartile one, that's a word for quarters, quartile two, quartile three, and quartile four. Now, I'm interested for the interquartile range, I'm interested for the middle 50% of the data. So from the four sections, I'm interested of the two sections that are in the middle. That's my interquartile range. How am I gonna find my interquartile range? I'm gonna go quartile three minus quartile one. So it is important for me to list my numbers from smallest to largest, find the median, and then find my quartile one and my quartile three. And then, and then once I find my interquartile range, my IQ art, we're gonna use our outlier using the box plot, the acceptable range. So I'm just gonna say the smallest number I'm going to accept, it is going to be my quartile one minus, now in this case, I'm gonna use 1.5, not three. In this case, I'm gonna use 1.5 times my interquartile range. And then the biggest number I'm going to accept is going to be quartile three plus 1.5 times my interquartile range. Okay, so you might be like, okay, let, let's take a look at this. Let's see. Construct a box plot for the data set. Identify any outliers that may exist in the data set. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna list my numbers from smallest to largest, okay? So let's see, my smallest number happens to be 117. I'm gonna pause my video on the recording, but I'm gonna write all my numbers from small to large. You guys know how to do that, so I'm just gonna write them out. There, boom, it just appeared, right? You guys can always write them from small to large. Notice if there was a repetition of numbers like 167, I wrote how many 167s I saw, because there's a repetition, okay? So now here, I have to find a number in the middle. I have, let's see how many numbers I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so I have to find a number in the middle. In this case happens to be this number. It is a number. Boom, that's the number in the middle. Sometimes I should just come over and I go like this. Boom, I cross right in the middle. If I do cross my number, because in the middle I only have one number, that number is not gonna count 
anymore for my other quartiles. So what I mean with that is to the left of this number, I only have seven more numbers. I'm not going to count that again. And then to the right of this number, I only have seven numbers again. I'm not going to count that one anymore. I found my median. I found my quartile two. That's the number in the middle. Now on the bottom half, let me find my number right in the middle, which happens to be 153. It is a number. So boom, I cross my number. If I'm crossing my number, that one is going to be my quartile one. Interesting here, it is going to be my quartile one. And this is my quartile two or median. Now on the upper half, let me find a number in the middle and it happens to be here. And this is my quartile three. Remember my biggest number is my quartile four and the smallest number is my quartile one. So first of all, I need to find my interquartile range. So I'm going to do here my interquartile range is quartile 3 minus quartile 1. So 176 minus 153, which happens to be 23. Okay, I use this information for my, uh, my interquartile range. I just found between quartile one and quartile three, we have 23 numbers. Now, what if my median is, it doesn't go between a number. So for example, let's say, what if I had a list like three, four, six, eight, 10, 10. And I ask you find the median. Well, the median goes right here. It goes in between two numbers. So I will be asking, what's the number between 6 and 8? Right? If you don't know what's the number between 6 and 8, add them up and divide it by 2. Now, at the bottom right, so this will be my quartile 2. On the bottom part, here my quartile 1 is 4, and here my quartile 3 is 10. So sometimes my, my markings goes through a number. Sometimes it goes in between a number. Okay. Coming back to my example that I was looking at over here, my interquartile range is 23. My median is 167. So, and then my quartile one is 153, my quartile three is 176. My smallest number, I'm going to accept is going to be, remember, quartile 1 minus my interquartile 3, I mean my interquartile range times 1.5. So I'm saying my smallest number that I'm going to accept is going to be 153 minus 23 times 1.5. I typed out on my calculator, it says 118.5. That's the smallest number I'm going to accept. Do you see a number smaller than that? Yes. 117. So 117 is an outlier. Not going to accept it. It's too small. Well, how about on the big numbers? The largest. The largest I'm going to accept is going to be quartile 3 plus my interquartile range times 1.5. So I mean 176 plus 23 times 1.5. I'm gonna type that on my calculator and it tells me 210.5. Okay, that's the small, that's the largest number I'm going to accept. Do we see a number larger than that? Yes. 211. So I'm going to separate this with a comma, a space, and 211. So it says identify any outliers. I found the outliers that exist for the data set. Use a comma to separate answers as needed. I had two outliers. I put a comma to separate them. Okay. Now we're going to construct a box plot. First, I look at my range. I'm going to look at my range. 
Remember, my range is the biggest numbered minus the smallest numbered. 211 minus 117. Okay, so 94, right? So that's telling me that when I draw this, my number line, if I draw this little segment here, if I'm counting by ones, I'm gonna have to draw 94 more. Whew, that's too much. Instead, instead of counting every, every one, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna count every 15. Okay, so I'm going to say my my smallest number is 117, right? I'm just going to write this as 120. It's fine if I write 117. It's a little bit less than 120. So this next one is going to be 135 because I'm going to be counting by 15s now. So the next one is going to be 150. I don't want to be counting by ones because I don't want to do 94 different markings. So 150, this is 165, this is 180, this is 195, this is 210. I think I have I can fit all my numbers. Let me write my outliers first. My outliers, let me represent it with little X's. 117, which is about here. You guys see 120, so a little less than that. 211, my other outlier is right here. It's 210, it's a little more than that. Now, my quartile one. Oh, besides, besides the outlier. So let me see my outliers. Which one's the smallest number besides my outlier? 137, right? Remember how I said this line was 135? So 137 will be about here. My quartile one is 153, right? So I'm gonna do my quartile one. My quartile two is 167. So I'm gonna, I know this little line is 165. So I'm gonna say it's about here. My quartile three is 173, I mean 176. So I see 180, so it's gonna be a little less than that. And I'm gonna close these as a box. Notice when I was doing my data, quartile one, quartile two, quartile three, I did little lines, line segments. Same thing I did here, quartile one, quartile two, quartile three, separated as a box. I know my biggest number is 211, right? But that's an outlier. My second biggest number is 199. So that's about here. I'm just gonna connect my smallest and my largest to my box plot. And that's how the box plot gets made. My X's represent any any outliers, pos any possible outliers. Nice. Take a look at another example. Construct a box plot for the data set identify any outliers that may exist in the data set. Good. So I'm going to draw this. Let me put my numbers in order from smallest to largest. 117, 138, 153, 153, 160, you know what, for space purpose, I'm gonna write it here at the bottom instead. Boom, I, they appeared, right? You can always pause the videos, right? You can always pause the video if you need to work on this. So I wrote my numbers from smallest to largest. I wanna find the numbered in the middle because that's my median. There's 15 numbers. My number in the middle happens to be uh, this number. And it's actually an actual number. So cool, I cross out that number. That's my median. Some people call it median. Some people call it quartile two. Okay, so from the bottom half, 
because I crossed out that number, I don't count it anymore, right? From the bottom half, there's seven numbers. My number in the middle here, it is going to be this nut right here, 153. That's my quartile one. From the upper half, there's seven numbers. The number in the middle is 175. That's my quartile three. So I have quartile one, quartile two, quartile three. So first of all, I need to find out my outliers. So for my outliers, I need to find my inter quartile range. Remember it is quartile three minus quartile one. In this case, 175 minus 153. My interquartile range is 22. Okay, why do I need this? Because it's going to help me with my outliers. My smallest number I'm going to accept. My smallest. Remember, it's quartile one minus interquartile range times 1.5. So my smallest number in my case is going to be 153 minus 22 times 1.5. I type that on my calculator and it gives me 120. The smallest number that I'm going to accept is 120. Anything less than that is an, it's an outlier. For my biggest number, the biggest number I'm going to accept is going to be quartile three plus my interquartile range times 1.5. So in this case, 175 plus 22 times 1.5. Type that on my calculator. I'm going to get 208. 208 is the biggest number I'm going to accept. Anything bigger than that is an outlier. So my question here is, any outliers? Yes, I have, let me change this to red. I have 117 and I have 211. Because remember, the smallest number is 120. Anything less than that is an outlier. The biggest number is 208. Anything bigger than that is an outlier. I'm going to separate it with a comma. So I'm going to... Um, construct a box plot for this data. My range I have to go 211 minus 117. The biggest number minus the smallest number. 211 minus 117 is 94. Okay, so I'm not going to be counting by ones. So I'm going to draw this right here. I'm going to draw a little line here. I'm not going to be counting by ones because if I do, I'm going to have to do 94 more markings, and that's too much. Okay, so my smallest number that I'm, uh, I'm accepting is 120, right? Fine. So I'm going to do 120. Anything less than that, it's an outlier. Okay. And let me count by 15s again. So this is 135 and this is 150. This is 165 and this is 180. I'm counting by 15s or every two is 30, right? This is 195, this is 210. Okay, I think I have enough there. My outliers, let me identify my outliers. My first one is 117. So it's less than 120. So it's somewhere about here. My other outlier is 211. So I see 210. So there's my outlier. Let me do my quartiles one, two, and three. My quartile one is 153, right? I see 150. So I'm going to do 153 is about there. Oh, better yet, I think it's more like right here. 167, I know this is 165, right? So 167 will be about here. And then 175, 
Uh, it's about here. I'm going to connect these, the quartile one, two, and three. Now, I'm not going to count my outliers, right? But besides my outlier, remember, boom, I'm not going to count it. What's the smallest number I can accept? 138. So it's about here. I know I'm not counting, I'm not accepting my outlier, but the biggest number that I see here is 198. So it's about here. And then there's my box. We know how to identify outliers. We know how to do box plots. You guys should be good.